Hi, this is Kevin. Welcome to my lecture on the regular expressions uh, chapter of the Charles Severance Python for Everybody book. Uh, regular expressions. In computing, a regular expression, also referred to as a regex or regexp, provides a concise and flexible means for matching strings of text. These strings of text include particular characters, words, or uh, patterns of characters. A regular expression is written in a formal language that can be interpreted um, by a regular expression processor, sometimes called a regular expression engine. And we have a link here to the Wikipedia article on regular expressions. And I'm going to bring up the current version of this. And uh, the, uh, this is uh, definitely worth a read. Uh, one of the interesting things is that the original work on regular expressions uh, was done by Stephen Cole Clean in the 1950s, okay, and it um, it began to be used in Unix text processing utilities like uh, awk and grep and sed, um, and uh, Unix uh, is from about 1968, uh, so. Regular expressions have uh, been around for a while, and um, they've been implemented in uh, uh, products uh, for a long time. Uh, they've been in Python. Uh, I assume that they've been here from the beginning, if not from very early on. Okay, so. Um, they're a big deal too. They're they're the standard way of searching through text to find what you want. Okay. So um, another version of what they are is they're really clever wildcard expressions for matching and parsing strings. So wildcard expressions, uh, these are things that you often use in oh, the command line of uh, certain operating systems and utilities where um, you get to use some kind of a meta character like an asterisk uh, to mean all. Um, and they're pretty cool stuff. So we're going to see more about them in a minute. So here's the article. Um, you might think of them as a really smart uh, find or search. Um, they're very powerful and they're quite cryptic. So if you look at these regular expressions themselves, this um, I like to refer to it as the regular expression pattern language. Uh, it's very terse, it's very cryptic, it's very powerful. Um, it's fun once you understand the language. Regular expressions are language unto themselves. So even though we're using, in our case, regular expressions within Python, uh, regular expressions and the regular expression processor engine that process them um, is like a language within a language. Uh, there a language are of marker uh, characters or meta characters. Uh, so we're programming with special characters. And it's a kind of an old school language. It's uh, uh, compact. It reminds you of a lot of things that you might see if you've learned how to do um, work with, say, Unix or Linux or OSX at the command line. Some of the notation that you use uh, has this uh, same kind of very terse, uh, compact uh, kind of quality to it. 
Um, now here's a cartoon that shows a regular worker who's given a job that's hopeless. And um, there are there's another worker who says, I know regular expressions. And they swoop in and they use they use uh, Perl, I guess. Uh, Perl was one of the first programming languages that included regular expressions. And whoosh, they swoop in and they're done. And um, regular expressions do have this uh, kind of superhero kind of quality that you can take uh, some very, uh, you know, a very daunting stack of work. And if you know how to use regular expressions to solve the problem, you can get the work done quite quickly. Um, here's a bit of a cheat sheet for the pattern language. Okay, so um, it's probably better to come back here in a second. First, I'm going to show you what one of these uh, regular expression uh, patterns looks like in uh, Python context. And it's going to look like uh, this. Okay, so we're going to import a package called RE for regular expressions and then one of the one of the commands that we're going to use is re search okay and uh this first string is the pattern and you can see this is a pretty simple uh, pattern it just has a character string that we're looking for so that doesn't have any of the meta characters at all Okay, and uh, the second uh, parameter is um, the variable that holds the reference to the string that we're searching for. So let's uh, go ahead a, uh, a bit, and we can see here on this uh, second version, there's a circumflex in front of the from. It's one of the meta characters, and it has a, a meaning that we'll go over in a minute. And then we're going to come up with yet another version of it sometime soon. Um, and here's some more of uh, the meta characters. So we have a square brackets expression, and we have these. We have the, we have a sequence of uh, digits zero through nine and the plus. So uh, you know the first version that we saw, and I'm going to back up to it. Um, with just uh, plain old text, okay? We're looking for plain old text. We wanted to find it. But then uh, we can surround that with and uh, complement it with these meta characters that have a special meaning. And now we're going to back up and see what the meanings are, okay? So the regular expression, a pattern is a string, and we saw that we're going to use it as one of the parameters when we call the regular expression engine. Okay, and uh, we might want to just have uh, a, a character string that we're looking for, but we may want to enhance or supplement it with these meta characters. So the circumflex matches the beginning of a line. So if you want to say that you want to match all the way from the beginning, well, you start your pattern with a circumflex or a hat, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the dollar sign matches the end of the line. So if you want to have a pattern that matches all the way to the end of the line, well, you end your pattern with a dollar sign. The period, or dot, as as we typically uh, call it in IT, uh, matches any character. So if you have a part of your pattern in which you're willing to match any character at all in the string that you're searching for, well, you might you want to use the dot. The backslash s is a uh, combination of it as it is an escaped uh, character, okay? 
Um, so the backslash S uh, says it will match any white space uh, character. So that includes a space, a tab, a new line, those kinds of things. A, a backslash capital S is going to match any non-white space uh, character. So that would include, uh, well, all the alphabetics, uh, all the numerals, um, punctuation uh, characters, uh, emojis, uh, any non-white space uh, character. Um, the asterisk is a um, is a uh, kind of a modifier. So you have an expression on the left side, and you put the asterisk on the right side, and that says it repeats that expression uh, zero or more times. So for instance, if we put it on the right side of a dot, it would say, I want to match any uh, character zero or more times. The combination of the asterisk and the um, the question mark is a non-greedy version of the same thing. Well, what do we mean by greedy? Well, when we just use the asterisk all by itself, it's going to match the longest possible string that it can. Okay, sometimes it's going to eat up more of the characters in the string that we're examining than we want to. So if we use the non-greedy version, it's going to match the smallest one that it can. And that can keep it from uh, consuming too many of the characters. Uh, the plus and, and the plus question uh, have the same kind of quality. Instead of being zero to many, it's one to many uh, characters. The square brackets allow us to get uh, to create a class of characters. So this is the class of characters, um, uh, lowercase a e i o u. So uh, it's going to match a single uh, character. Um, I'm sorry, the official name is, it's a set. Okay, so when we have this, we say we're going to match one character, okay, uh, and it has to be an A, an E, an I, an O, or a U. Now, what if we wanted to match a series of those? Well, we would uh, combine them with the asterisk or the plus. Okay, here's one that is a... Uh, uh, interesting thing. If we have the circumflex on the inside in one of these uh, uh, character uh, sets, it, it, it is saying that we'll match anything that's not a capital X, Y, or Z. Okay? Uh, the set of characters uh, can include a range. So here we're going to match lowercase a through z and the normal zero through nine. And the parentheses are used um, when we're doing the uh, re dot find all. They're used uh, to mark where we would like the regular expression engine to extract values from the string. So uh, when we do an re find, um, I'm sorry, an re search, um, we're going to be looking for a match and we're either going to find it or not. When we do an re uh, dot find all, we're going to be looking for matches and ex extracting either all or part of what we match. And the uh, parentheses uh, are the uh, delimiters within our regular expression uh, pattern that say, in case of the open uh, parent, start extracting here. In, a case, in case of the close, stop extracting here. OK? Um, before you can use regular expressions in your program, you must import 
the library using import re. Okay, and um, in my class, we typically use the form of import where we would say from re import uh, find all or from re import uh, search. For some reason, most people who use re just uh, uh, code import re. And I've generally followed that practice myself. So it's probably the one case where I just do a blanket import of the whole package. Whether I've copied a bad practice or not, I don't know, but that's what I've done. So you can use re search to see if a string matches a regular expression, similar to using the find method for strings. You can use uh, the function re find all to extract portions of a string that match your regular expression, similar to the combination of find and then subsequently slicing. Okay, now I really like the next, hmm, I don't know how many slides, it's at least a handful. Okay, because what the author has done is to um, uh, pose the question, why do I want to use regular expressions? Couldn't I just use a lot of the methods in the string uh, class and get the same effect. Okay. Uh, so it's kind of a two part uh, question. How would it be different to use the RE package uh, using RE search and RE find all? How would it be different to use that from using just the methods of the string class? And so what he's done is he's put this code side by side in a really interesting kind of way. Okay, so on the left-hand side, uh, he he has some code, and he's going to use the um, he's going to th use the methods of the string uh, class. So he opens a file in a kind of abbreviated way, and he calls the the file object, he uses a variable hand. I think that's short for handle, for file handle. And then he says for line and hand, he's going to iterate over the lines in the file. Uh, at first, he does an R strip. So he gets uh, blank spaces and new lines off the right-hand side. And then he says if line uh, dot find um and then he he has uh uh from uh colon that's what he's looking to find if it's greater than or equal to zero then he wants to print it okay so let's think about what we have here first of all what's in this file okay well, it just so happened that, that I, I have been in this file. Um, if you want to, you can go to the website for the book and it'll have a pointer about how to go uh, to GitHub and get the code that's associated with uh, the book. And from there, you can find that this mbox is short dot text is um, is a file that includes a bunch of email headers. Okay. And I don't know enough about email headers to know if this is just one email header. I think it's probably a series of them. Probably each of these uh, dash line, uh, well, it's kind of hard to tell what's what here, right? But it includes a bunch of email headers, 
And the idea here is that this is a typical kind of a log file or a header file. It's got much more information than we're looking for. So what we're trying to do is find the lines we're interested in and then eventually extract the data from them that we want to act on in some kind of way. Okay, and uh, this is just the kind of job that regular expressions are great for because um, it's a lot to sift through. Uh, it's a hard job to do by hand. It's if you were doing it just with a text editor and cutting and pasting and all that uh, stuff. One, it'd be horrible work to do. And the other is you'd be prone to mistakes, right? So that's the data that we're going through, right? Um, and what he's saying is that if this record includes uh, the text from, which looks like uh, uh, this is the line that's going to list uh, the sender, well, then we want to print it. Okay, and in this uh, code, any line that matches, you know, we have a positive, we have a match, we're going to print, right? Okay, so this is how we would do it with just the regular string class methods. How would we do it if we use the regular expression uh, package? Well, we would open uh, the file the same way. We would do four line in, in hand. We would iterate over it. We would strip each line. And then we would say if re search, and then we have two uh, parameters or arguments. The first one is the regular expression pattern. We're looking for just from colon. Uh, and then we're trying to match the text in line. Okay. And if this is uh, true, well, we're going to print the line. So we're essentially going to do the same thing. Okay. Uh, now, when you look at these, I just want to point out that these are kind of comparable. It's not, uh, one could even argue uh, that the code on the left was easier to write than the code on the right. So like, why would you want to learn about regular expressions? And I would point out that even when these things are about equal, or just a little bit harder to use the regular expression version. It's worth the, inv worth the investment in at the time to get good at using regular expressions and the regular expression engine. Okay? Um, so, I want to point out one more thing. And that is, um, the code... Um, that uh, Severance, the author, uses on these slides uh, is not really up to the standards that we use in my course. Uh, and there's a couple of reasons. One is that he has a different kind of coding style than I fully support. Um, and two, uh, he is a textbook and slide author. And I'll tell you this trying to get code, side-by-side uh, -side code on one slide is a pretty mean feat, okay? So how do you do it? Well, one of the things that you do is that you shrink and doubt as much as you can. You make the variable names as short as you can. You leave off options. Um, you try to make the so you don't want it to be wide because you don't want it to go off the side of the slide and you don't want it to be too long because you don't want it to go off the bottom. Okay, so what would this right-hand side code look like uh, if we refactored it to uh, uh, be consistent with what we do in my course, which is IS430 at the University of Illinois um, School of Information Sciences. Well, um, here's what I did. I went and I found the code from the book and I found that for the most part, this uh, REO1.py was uh, the code that we were looking at. And I took that and I refactored it. So uh, he had a comment at the top 
and I turned it into a doc string, which we consider to be a best uh, practice. And then he imported RE, and I did the same thing. Uh, whereas the code from the slide and in the textbook, uh, it's just a plain script without uh, uh, putting the mainline code into main. Um, while that's a good practice for making examples small enough to fit into the book, and in this case, small enough to fit into the slide, uh, we don't really consider that to be a good uh, practice. Uh, the best uh, practice is to take your code um, and put the highest level code into main. So the code here has been put into main. Um, and the line where we open the file, we're not going to call the file object hand. We're not even going to call it handle. A more traditional name for uh, kind of like practicing Python uh, coders would be in file for an input file. Okay. And when we do an open in my class, we always include the, the function uh, code that says whether we're reading or writing or we don't do this a lot, but you can also append. Okay. And then we also specifically say what the encoding is, and we're always using UTF-8. So a lot longer, might not fit on the slide. So now we're saying for line and in file, we're going to strip off the right side. Okay. And we're going to say if re search. And this line is a little uh, different because before the string that includes the regular expression, we have an R. Now R is not for regular expression. R is for raw the string. And uh, it's considered a best practice these days to always put your regular expressions into raw strings rather than regular strings. Now, what's a raw string? Well, uh, it's kind of like an F string. <laughs> It's an R string, although they don't uh, call, them the, call them that. So it's a string with extra functionality, kind of superpowers. And the superpower that raw strings have is um, it's easier to put escaped uh, characters into your um, into your regular expression. Okay. In order to get valid uh, Python, um, you would have to put, you have to take every backslash that you put into your uh, uh, pattern and you'd have to make it two backslashes in order to clear all the errors from your program. And we don't want to do that. So what's the alternative? Uh, always put your pattern into a raw string, even if it doesn't include a a backslash, a backslash expression, okay, which is always going to put the R uh, before the string that has the regular extra, uh, regular expression uh, pattern. Okay, and then if we get a match, we're going to print the line. Okay, so we, um, and then of course, uh, we have have the call to main at the bottom. So we are going to run this, okay, and we're going to see the output. So we got a lot of matches, okay. So um, whatever we have here, whatever this is, is it uh, is that an email log? Is it? In, uh, it's probably some kind of email log, right? Uh, we've matched a whole bunch of lines. Okay, so we get the chance to see that. Okay, so I'm not going to show you the refactored version of everything, but I am going to show you a couple of these. All right, so that's the first one. And here, again, which would you prefer using, um, using the find method of, of the string class or using re-search? Um, 
I'm going to prefer RE search because in my practice, I want to use RE as much as I can so I get better and better at it over time. In terms of this example, I think they're about equal. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Okay, so now uh, we, one of the problems that we could have had before is we could have matched some lines that just had a from, okay, uh, from colon, but they were not at the beginning of the line, okay? And one of the things you have to think of here is uh, w um, these programs act like a filter, right? And uh, so what we want to do is we want to match exactly the lines that we want. We don't want uh, um, too many. Those would be false uh, positives, okay? And we don't want to rule out things that we wanted to match. Those would be false negatives. Now, in theory, the best way to write these kinds of problems is to start with a pattern that's maybe even a little broader than the things um, than the pattern that you're eventually going to settle on. Uh, so you'll maybe get more positives than you're looking for, and if you do take this printing approach, well, they, then you can go look and see what you've matched. And you can go, well, this is good, uh, but I've got too many of this or too many of that. Maybe uh, we're matching from colons that are not at the beginning of the line. I think if you look at the output for when I ran the code, we were not, but let's just imagine, okay? One of the reasons why you want to start with your rule wide and narrow it down is that if you start with it too narrow, um, you're not going to, you know, let's say you're printing the matches, you're not going to see the matches that you missed. Okay, so as a general kind of procedural approach, start a little bit wide and keep narrowing it down until you get just the matches that you want. Okay, so what have we done here? Well, we have um, we have uh, changed the method that we're calling on the regular methods of the string class. We instead of saying that um, that we want to match a string, we have gone to starts with, so we have to match from the beginning. And then here, all that we've had to do is add a circumflex or a hat, whatever you want to call it, at the beginning of the rule. And this says, well, I want to match from colon, but only if it starts at the beginning of the string. Okay, so pretty nice. Okay, now um, let's let's uh, say that we wanted to match um, some other um, uh, text uh, that could be in an email server log. Okay, and let's say that we're trying to we're trying to match. Um, uh, um, these four uh, lines. So, uh, you know, the first one has x hyphen civ uh, colon, then x d spam result, x d spam confidence and content type message uh, body. Okay, so we have all of those. So, how could we start to form a rule? that would get that job done. Well, here's what we can do. Well, uh, we can begin with a circumflex, or again, a hat, depending on what you want to call it, then an uppercase X. And then we have a, comb a combination of the dot that says match any characters, and an asterisk that says many times, zero to many times, okay? and uh, a colon. 
okay so we want at the beginning of the screen we want to begin with an uppercase x and we want to match all the way to the colon okay okay so that's how that works um so oh this is a series of these so that says uh match at the start of the line uh match any character match many times okay uh what if we were getting uh too many matches right <clears throat> um uh so let's look at this uh first of all we want to make sure that we're not um it's because all the ones that we want begin with x hyphen let's say we start at the beginning of the line and we want x hyphen okay now instead of any character okay uh we can use backslash uppercase s for any non-white space uh character okay so that's not going to match uh spaces or uh, tabs or new lines okay and we said that we want at least one one or more and then we want it to end with a colon so what would that give us well we would match x civ we'd max x d spam result um we uh would we match this one no, we wouldn't because it doesn't have these non-white space characters between the hyphen and uh, the colon. And the plus says we need at least one. So this one would fail. And this one that says X plane is uh, behind schedule, well, that's not going to match either. And that's not going to match because it doesn't have a, uh, or is it? let's look at this um i think it i think it is uh it starts at the beginning it has x hyphen and then it has uh at least one non-white space character okay and then it ends in a colon oh it doesn't work because we have a white space that comes before the colon okay so that's going to interrupt it okay so again one and two are going to pass um are going to be a positive they're going to match uh three and four are going to fail okay and again uh a great approach here is uh start with your rule a little too uh wide or lax or permissive um do the trick that we saw a few slides uh, uh, ago where you print out the matches and then you can see that you have too many and then just keep tightening up the rule until you've squeezed out all the false positives but not uh, squeezed out any of the true positives. Okay. Uh, matching and extracting data so sometimes uh we not only want to know whether this is a line of text that we're interested in we want to extract some data from the text okay so um uh instead of using re search we use re uh, find all so this uh, slide, the first uh, bullet point is um, uh, loosely true, okay? It says RE search, which we've been using, returns a true false depending on whether the string matches the regular expression. And that kind of makes sense because we're using RE search in an if test, right? So let me just uh, go back a bit. We're on slide 14. Uh, yeah, look, we say if re search. 
So uh, if it's uh, true, we're going to print a line. If it's false, we're not. Now, I just want to ask, is this really returning a Boolean true or false? It turns out that it's not. Okay, if you go to the Python uh, documentation on the RE package, you'll find that at RE search returns uh, either a, a match object, and match is a class that's part of the RE uh, package. So if it's a true, it returns a match object. Okay, okay. And we could further inquire from the match object to find out where we matched uh, exactly the string that we matched, all that kind of stuff. Those are not kind of beginning regular expression skills and uh, practices. But so, uh, and if we don't find it, it returns the value none. Okay, so the reason that we can test it with an if is not because it returns a true or a false, because it really returns a match object or a none. It's because match object and none have a, a uh, they're, they're, they support truth value testing. Okay, so a match object is always true in this if sense, and a none object is always false. So if we go back to where we were, which is I think uh, 14, nope, uh, 15. Um, so uh, when we say it returns, uh, it returns a true false, um, that's loosely true. You can test it for truthiness, as they say in Python. You can do truth value testing. So if you got a match, um, it's going to pass. Uh, and if you didn't get a match, it's going to fail. Okay, which isn't to say that it returns a Boolean. Okay, now if we want to do more, uh, we use re.findall. Okay, uh, so what are we doing? Sorry about that, folks. Here we are. Uh, here we're trying to uh, go through a string. Okay, here's the string. The string is my two favorite numbers are 19 and 42. Okay, and uh, here he's working uh, at the console. He's working at the REPL. So he imports RE. He sets a, a, a variable equal to that string. Why is he using these really obscure variable names like X and Y? Not because these are good variable names, because he's got to get this onto the slide. <laughs> okay, so um, if you're a courseware developer, uh, uh, do as he does. Okay, if you're um, if you're a programmer, well, stick with your practice of using more meaningful variable names. Okay, um, so here's what we we're saying. Uh, Let's see, the expression that he uses is he has a class, um, I'm sorry, a set. Okay, so we're going to match any character that is in the sequence 0 through 9. Okay, and then uh, plus says at least 1. Okay. Okay, so he does uh, re find all, he passes this regular expression, I would have put an R in front of it to make it a raw string because that's the best uh, practice. And then he is looking in this string that he's assigned to X. And then uh, he prints the result. So what's the result of, a, of an RE uh, find all? Well, and re find all is a um, is a list of the matches. Okay, so he matched um, a two, he matched a nineteen, he matched a forty-two. Okay, so you get back a list of the matches. Pretty cool.
Um, now let me just back up a second because I kind of misspoke in a way that I think is an important uh, distinction. So, um, uh, um, no, I, uh, I didn't. I was going to say that uh, we hadn't extracted them, but we did. Oh, oh, okay, so we got back. Uh, we got back a list. If you did truth value testing on this, it would be true, okay, because it would be a full list, okay. Um, and if we did, uh, and if in fact we didn't match anything, we would be getting back an empty list. So that would uh, that would support uh, truth value testing as well. Okay. All right. So when we use our e find all, it returns a list of zero or more substrings that match the regular expression. Okay. And so what happens if we say uh, we have y? So we know that y. Um, um is going to look for uh a capital a e i o u that's uh again a set so um one or more of these capital vowels and we're going to look back in x now are there any capital vowels no there's not the only uppercase is an m so we're going we're not going to match anything at all so what do we get back we get back an empty list so again if you wanted to uh instead of examining the list and using what's inside it you could use truth value testing you could use an if okay and if in fact we found something well if we use the expression if y, well, this would be true. And if we use the expression if y here, well, this would be false. Because lists, when you truth value test them, if they have uh, contents, they're true. And if they're empty, they're false. OK, now let's talk about greedy matching and, and why uh, you might want to use non-greedy matching instead, okay? So the repeat meta characters, uh, asterisk and plus sign, push outward in both uh, directions uh, uh, to match the largest possible string, okay? So here, the string that we have from colon using the colon character so we do re find all we want to start with a capital f and we say that we want one or more of any character okay and then we want to end with a colon okay and then what do we match okay if we if we print what we get back which we assign to y well we match uh all the way to the colon all the way to the second uh colon okay why well because it's greedy it's going to match as big of a string as long of a string as it can it could have stopped at the first of the colons and maybe that's what we intended but unless we use that non-greedy marking it's going to go as far as it possibly can and that's all the way to the to the second uh, colon okay so what if we were to use non-greedy matching well um, this example is pretty much the same except in the middle of this um, regular expression pattern instead of saying uh, dot plus we said dot plus question mark and the question mark modifier makes the plus non-greedy so it's only going to go 
it's only going to match until it satisfies the rule minimally. So what's going to happen? Well, you know, we matched it, we printed it, and what do we have from just the first colon? Just that far. That's all we did. So um, again, um, you probably want to make your rules, at least initially, kind of relaxed and then look at the things that you're matching and look for false positives. And then one of the ways that you can, uh, you can, you can, um, um, tighten it. I guess that's the word I'm looking for. One of the ways that you can, you can tighten it is to, um, uh, uh, take the pluses and the asterisks. It works the same way on both. Uh, modify them with the question mark to make the matching non-greedy. Um, so, more fine-tuning for string extraction. You can refine the match for RE find all and separately determine which portion of the match is to be extracted by using parentheses. And I really like this feature a lot. Okay. So um, the first example that we have here does not use parentheses, right? So uh, we have a line here this this is the data that we're operating on okay and uh apparently that value has been assigned to x why are we not showing the code uh wouldn't fit on the slide okay <laughs> uh okay so we just we're just assuming that this whole thing is assigned to x so we do an re find all and we say uh, we've got non-white space character, uh, one or more non-white space, an at sign, one or more non-white space. Okay, so what do we get when well, we match uh, one or more non-white space, at sign, one or more non-white space? So the two things that break it are the space before Stephen and the space after za. Okay, and if, if you look at what we got, we got that. Okay, that's good. Now we're not using the parens yet. We're extracting the whole thing. What if we wanted to match the whole thing, but only extract a part of it? Okay, we can do that. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Um, we we have this from so we want to make sure that we start with a from okay um but we don't want to extract the from right so how do we do that well we have the from in in the rule in the pattern okay but not within the paren so let's look here uh, we do the re find all. So we say, okay, from the beginning of the line, we want to match from, okay, and then a space. And now uh, the the things that we're matching inside here, this is what we want um, extracted. So non-white space uh, characters, one or more, and at sign, at sign non-white space uh, uh, characters, one or more. So then we get Stephen Marquard at whatever. Oh, okay, but we don't get the from. So we get to have the from to make sure that we're not matching uh, things that are not on, on a from line. Okay, uh, but we don't have to extract everything that we match. We, we just, we take the part of the match that we really want to extract and we put it into parens. It's really pretty cool. So string parsing examples. Um, so here we've got 
uh, a line that we're trying to extract. Uh, I guess we call that uh, data. Okay. I just want to point out that uh, data is not a pretty good variable name because it's all data. Okay. So, um, oh, I'm sorry. We're not using regular expressions here. We're back to using the, uh, the methods of the string class. Okay. So here's what we do. Uh, we want to come up with the position of the at sign. So we call it at pause. Uh, and we, on the string that holds the data, we call find for the at sign. So then we print at pause. And then we have uh, s pause. That's probably the space that we want. I'm sorry. You click on this and it goes off like a loaded gun. Uh, so that's probably space uh, position. Okay. So now we're finding uh, the position of the space. Okay. Um, and we're putting at pause in here um, to make sure that we don't match up here. And then we say the host is the data, and then we take a slice of it, and then we print the host, and then we get that. Now, for people who have done string handling processing, for a long time. Uh, this kind of, you know, you find one side of what you're looking for, then you find one, the other side of what you're looking for, then you slice it out. This kind of uh, processing is uh, pretty common, right? Um, and in most uh, programming languages that don't have these regular expression string extraction features, uh, this is how you do it. And um, it's something you have to get pretty good at. Whereas when you do this with regular expressions, um, it gets easier. Now, we're not going to do regular expressions yet. We're going to do this thing that he calls the double split uh, pattern. But uh, I'll go past this and just showing we're going to do the regular expression uh, version pretty soon. And let's look at the regular expression a uh, second, and then I'll, I'll go back to double split because I don't like that one either. So uh, we imported our E, the variable that's holding the line of text is called now Lin. We do an RE find all, okay? And we say we want to begin to match with an at sign, but only after the at sign do we want to uh, begin to match, okay? And we want to match anything that's not a space, okay? So any non-space uh, character, which is not the same as a non-white space uh, character. So just anything that's not a space uh, and as many of them as they are, okay? So as soon as we hit the space, we're going to stop. So we're not going to start until we pass the at sign, and we're going to stop when we hit the space. Okay? And then what do we uh, pick out? UCT.AC.ZA. So I think that's pretty cool. Okay? This is the way I would prefer to do it. Now, what about the double split? Are we interested in this? Okay, so um, how do we do this? Well, um, it looks like we're taking this line of text and we're assigning it to a variable named line. Okay, so then we, uh, we do a split on line and that gives us the list words. Okay, and then email uh, gets assigned the value words one. That's the second uh, word, 
that's this whole thing okay so then we say uh then we take email and we split it on the outside okay and then we say that we want to print um, we assign that to the list pieces okay and pieces one is the second one and this is again U C T A C Z A. I think the thing that's um that's harder in my mind about the first two alternatives is you need to keep this kind of sequence of uh pulling things apart uh in your head. Okay. You have to do that for the double split. Um you have to do that from where we're calling um uh, find and we're slicing. Whereas um, uh, all of the action for the Ari Fondial approach is in the features of Ari Fondial and using uh, the uh, parens uh, to control how much you extract. And uh, of these three alternatives, which uh, do I prefer? Well, I prefer the regular expression one. Um, I prefer it because I, I think that um, it has a real high value for me to get better and better at regular expressions. We can use them in Python. We can use them in other uh, programming languages like uh, Java and JavaScript. Um, we can use them in, in the Unix utilities. Uh, we can use them in, um, oh, regular expressions are being used in uh, a lot of implementations of SQL for relational uh, databases. So if you're going to invest in something to become better and better at it, uh, regular expressions is a lovely candidate for that. Um, so that was that one. Okay, um, an even cooler regex version. Okay, so let's look at this. Um, uh, this is one where we say, um, well, it, this is a role we pulled it out into a, a kind of explosion. So we want to match from the beginning from a space uh, uh, a bunch of characters, zero to many uh, characters, and at sign, uh, and then um, any non space uh, character. Um, zero to many of them. And stop extracting. Oh, I think what I, I knew what I liked about this. Um, uh, I think that this um, series of slides and it, 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 it's actually one slide with a bunch of uh, um, uh, pop-ups on it but uh, I, a lot of people when when they're learning about regular expressions they're going to say um, uh, what um, how, how is this a programming language? And I think the interesting thing to think of here is this is really a sequence, right? So we have a sequence. And uh, uh, if we look at this, we begin with uh, the circumflex, which says start at the beginning of the line. And then we have the from look for the string from okay and then we go on to the next uh, slide uh, skip a bunch of uh, characters look for an at sign okay start extracting then okay uh, 
uh, match non-blank uh, characters or non, yeah, match uh, non-blank uh, characters. Match many of them. Stop extracting. Okay, so when you really think about this, this is a programming language, okay? And um, um, it's really worthwhile to think of it that way. <clears throat> okay, so now we're going to, um, now we're going to do um, dspam uh, confidence. So uh, this uh, log entry uh, has uh, something to do with the server's um, assessment of whether this is spam or not. Okay, so we're looking for um, we're looking for the log record that has uh, the entry x d spam confidence and then a value. Okay, so uh, what would we want to do? Well, uh, we import re. Uh, we open the file. It's the same file we've been working on a lot. Uh, we create a list, num list. Okay, we call list to get an empty list. In my class, if we want an empty list, we usually use empty square brackets. Calling list to get an empty list is kind of old fashioned. And then we say for line in hand, that's the reason that hand is not a great name for the file object. So we're going through each uh, line in the file, okay? Uh, we strip uh, the new line off the right side. And so then we have a list called stuff and we do an re find all and we're looking at the beginning of the line for x d spam confidence space and then we're going to uh, we want to look for uh, one or more um, uh, oh uh, I'm sorry we want uh, a digit and then a, a dot okay so when we use a dot when we use a period inside of these square brackets it turns out we mean it literally so we want a digit and then a dot and then more characters okay what we're trying to do is to pick up a floating point number it's something like a zero a dot and then these four uh, digits so that's what we're trying to match here this is what we're trying to extract from line and then we say if len of stuff is not equal to one continue. I, I don't like that coding. And then he says, uh, he turns, uh, he turns the first match, which is stuff zero into a float. He makes that num and then he, he appends it, uh, uh, to numless. Okay. Now, in my class, we never use uh, continue. And why is that? Well, because all continue says is whatever loop you're currently in, whatever block of code you're currently in, jump over the rest of it. Okay. So if we want to jump over this, if it's not equal to one, okay, better code would be to say if if the length of stuff is equal to one, um, do this, do that. Just put these two things hanging off of an if. We do it every day. So this uh, continue is um, really old school coding. Again, why did he want to do that? Well, 
See how this barely fits on the slide? <laughs> okay. And he wasn't really here to, uh, to tell us about how to code loops. He wanted to uh, show us uh, how to extract uh, values. Uh, but please, uh, don't ever use uh, continue. Um, there's no need to use it. And it's a completely gratuitous, old-fashioned bad behavior. Okay? So um, what he's doing is then he's um, he wants to print the maximum of all these. So he has a list of all the values. So he gets the maximum by calling max on the num list. And then he prints maximum uh, and then the value. And then that comes out maximum 0 0.9907. So there we go. Oh. Escape characters. Okay. So up until now, uh, I've been telling you to put an R in front of the strings that we use for regular expression uh, patterns. Uh, that turns them into a raw string. And again, a raw string is another uh, uh, string with superpowers like the F string. Okay. And what does the raw string do? Well, it allows us to, um, to place backslashes into strings uh, to meet a backslash. Uh, and in a normal Python string, if you want a backslash to be a backslash, you have to escape it, which means that you have to put that in there twice. So if we wanted this to be a normal Python string, instead of backslash dollar sign, it would be backslash backslash uh, dollar sign. And then our, our rules would look different than everybody else's regular, you know, our, our pattern strings would be weird, okay? compared to what uh, people would do in other languages and in the Unix utilities, which use regular expressions, we would have uh, double uh, backslashes where they only had a single one. Well, raw strings is the answer to that. So up until now, I've been telling you to put the R before the string that holds the pattern. But, you know, did we really have to do it? We didn't have any backslashes in it. I consider it the better practice to always put the R in front of the string that holds a pattern. You might not have a backslash in it today, but you may come back to main the, maintain the program tomorrow and you have to refine the pattern and you have to add a backslash expression. So always use the raw string and it'll solve that uh, problem, okay? Now, does he do this here? No, he doesn't. Okay, but if you take this code and you bring it into a, let's bring it into a, uh, a modern uh, sort of IDE like uh, PyCharm. Okay, and right now, let's say that we wanted a backslash here let's say that we wanted to add something like this. We wanted a any um, um, uh, non-white space uh, character if we wanted to do something like that. Well, that works just fine. Oh, I'm sorry. That's a uh, W. Uh, uh, like that. Okay, that's fine. But what if you leave off the R? You're going to see that all of a sudden you get a squiggly underline from a uh, PyCharm that says, this isn't a legal Python string. Okay, so that's the problem. Okay, if we took the code that came from the severance uh, textbook and we imported all these, if I was able to find all these and import all these into PyCharm, they'd start to look like this, 
okay? And the solution to all of them is always use a raw string, here's the R, for uh, the string that holds a, um, a regular expression uh, pattern and it works like a charm, okay? So starting here, you have to imagine that the slides have these have these R's in here, even though they don't, okay? Because I use the slides as created by Charles uh, uh, Severance. I think he did a great job on the chapter. I think he did a great job on the slides. I really like them. They just haven't got the R. So if you want a special regular expression character to just behave normally, most of the time you prefix it with a slash. Okay, so what does that mean? What if you were just looking for a dollar sign? You don't want to use a dollar sign as a meta character. Okay, you want a dollar sign. Well, how do you express that? Well, just put a slash in front of it, okay? Uh, that way, it doesn't say match the end of the string, okay? It means literally a dollar sign. So, in summary, regular expressions are a cryptic, cryptic but powerful language for matching strings and extracting elements of those strings. Regular expressions have special uh, characters, meta characters, that indicate intent. Okay, and uh, again, I th one of the things I really like about the chapter and uh, the slides and all those kinds of things is that they, uh, I think he gives a really even-handed account of um, what you would do in Python to solve these same kind of problems if we didn't have the regular expression uh, package. Could you do all these things? Yeah, you could, you know. You would use um, the methods of the string uh, class and, and some classic uh, string handling and manipulation uh, code, right? Um, or you can use regular expressions you're investing in a technology that's widely used. Um, the harder your problem gets, the more fiddling around you'd have to do with, you know, normal Python code that used uh, the methods from the string class. Uh, so the harder the problem gets, the bigger the payback from using the RE package. So uh, my approach has always been to favor using the RE package whenever I can uh, and getting better and better with it and more confident over time. And um, I've recommended that to students. So I recommend it to you. Students have come back and said that that worked very well for them. So I hope that'll work very well for you too. And those are the credits, so um, I'm going to stop here and say bye until next time. Bye-bye.